Is liberty dying where you live? Escape to Keen at freekeen.com. <laughs>
Mary Campbell gave copies of letters that sent to the defendant, but uh, I'm not even report for the court that when letters are sent uh, to the defendant, they always list an offer to resolve it. Uh, the witnesses uh, was complaining. Well, I mean, well, is there something that you can show me that you, that, that you received, that you kept a copy of? That we, we don't, as I said, we don't have a copy of that. Do, do you have any? Did you receive any documents that indicate any? I have not. Didn't have any, any, nothing that had anybody's name on it? No. As a witness? No. I just got to have to get the bill in front of me for a second. Do you have a rule for you? I don't, Your Honor. Pleasure. Well, I've got it. I just want to make sure I was going to quote it accurately. That's all. It's uh, 210B. Not less than 14 days prior to trial, the state shall provide the defendant with a list of names of witnesses, including experts and reports, and a list of any lab reports, etc., if it anticipates in truth introducing a trial. I guess if the state hasn't done that, they can, you can't demonstrate that there, that there was anything in there. Right, I would argue this point that the, the remedy shouldn't be that it might be dismissed. I think, mean, of course, it's clear on that. that the uh, Supreme Court, the matter should not be dismissed. The matter be, should be continued to allow uh, the defendant. The state has made, it's not like the state hasn't, the state has sent out a uh, letter. We can get a copy of that letter that was sent out uh, to the defendant. The defendant's indicated he never got the discovery that was sent to him. I don't know why. But you've already indicated that. Hang on, one at a time. One at a time, yeah. Uh, so I, I could, you were both talking, I couldn't understand. So, so I just asked that the matter, if the court, the defendant is one before the matter be. Let me ask, what, what would this witness be here to testify to? This witness would be here to testify, you won't, you this was a uh, software result from a sobriety checkpoint. Um, I guess I could ask the court, if the court's willing to take judicial notice of this superior court's order regarding the sobriety checkpoint, this witness would not be necessary. The only witness would be the actual trooper who wrote the, the Citation that the defendant be aware of. Well, is it, are we going to get the same objection to the next witness? As far as notice? Well, you're, no, I believe you, you should have sure known that you know, he's on the complaint, he was one less than that. I, I understand, that's not what I'm saying. Are we going to, well, you'd, you'd still have the same objection to the next witness, correct? Right. Yeah. Is there, is, there's no motion to suppress on the validity of the original stop at the motor vehicle being filed. Right. There's no motion to suppress, is that right? That's right. I don't, I don't, I don't have anything. I don't have anything either. Okay. All right. Well, there's no, I don't think this witness is even necessary. Yeah. That's fine, then. That's fine, right? Who wants the next witness? Then? I mean, this is the next witness, but well, he's going to object to that, so let's anticipate that. Yes. Okay. And you had no notice of, of uh, no official notice. Okay. Yeah. All right. Based on the circumstances, uh, Dismissal is an extreme remedy that shouldn't be ordered unless it's under the most important and serious circumstances. This isn't one of those circumstances. Um, particularly with respect to the second witness, my, it would be my understanding that the state saying this is a person who witnesses actually conducted the, the stop and the interrogation or whatever took place. That's correct, right, So my in my view, you wouldn't be prejudiced by that witness's testimony, so the failure to notify you is, is, is a violation of the rules, but I'm not going to dismiss the case as a result of it. 
this is a witness that you had clear knowledge of, uh, who's been involved with the case, and would in all likely be testifying here. So it's not, not a surprise to you, it's not prejudicial to you. You can either, we can either continue the case to allow the official notice to be provided to you, or if you want to decide to continue the case today, I'll let you, we can continue the case since everybody's here. I'll give you a couple minutes to dwell on that, and you can decide how you want to proceed. Okay? I'll just take a quick piece of that. Back on the record, you decide how you want to proceed today? So make sure you have that you have an address for the defendant. Are you, want continue, you want to continue the hearing today? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you meant you wanted to continue today. Yeah. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Take off Trooper John Sarah to stand. I swear to test me about this matter, the truth, the whole truth, and the whole truth, so I'll be back. I do. Please have a seat. I still object to this witness as I wasn't on the list. Okay, for the same reasons I talked about before, I'm going to deny your motion to dismiss. Is there an exemption for that? Pardon? Is there an exception? Yeah, of course, discretion. As I said before, to dismiss a case has to be for the most, most, most serious situation, and this is not a serious situation. You had, you had notice that this, you had actual notice didn't have notice provided by the rule, but if this was a witness that had, wouldn't have any idea what would be testifying, I would, I would probably be going your way on that witness. This is not that kind of witness. That's why I gave you the opportunity to continue and everything, to, to continue the case to another day if you wanted to. I'll still give you that opportunity if that's what you want to do. Okay. You state your name, your last name for the record. My name is John Lucero, L-U-C-E-R-O. Now, I just want to make it clear, the state did not honor the rule. Correct about that, but but the court has this discretion as to how it's going to deal with that. And that's how that's how I'm dealing with this, which is an advisory to the state next time. No excuse. Who is there? How are you employed? I'm a trooper with the Yamaha State Police. I've been so employed since August of 2003. Are you a certified police officer in the state of New Hampshire? I am. Where did you receive that certification? I um, was a graduate of the 133rd Police Academy where I received training in, in criminal code and motor vehicle code enforcement. I want to draw your attention to August 31st, 2013, approximately 11.19 in the evening. You worked at that date time? Yes, I was. What was your assigned duty at that date time? I was uh, working at a court authorized sobriety checkpoint. Where was that uh, sobriety checkpoint located at? It was on Route 12 in the town of Walpole. <coughs> You used to describe for the court how this uh, sprite checkpoint was set up on the 12 and Walpole. We had uh, two stations set up in the southbound lane and two uh, stations set up uh, in the northbound lane. Uh, it was marked uh, with flags uh, further down the road at NHM and a safety officer and uh, OIC and other uh, troopers. <coughs> and how were you dressed that evening? I was in a uh, full duty uniform, headgear, and uh, uh, vest. Uh, reflective vest. And did you go through an operational plan ahead before you did this? Yes, we did. We received a briefing and a checklist as well as a uh, sheet to uh, identify vehicles that uh, were uh, identified to pull over into the check stations. Okay. Were you assigned at a certain check station? Yes, I was. I was at check station three. Well, where was that located? On the northbound side. And as you were there at that specific date and time, did you observe anything if anything happened as you were at checkpoint three on the 12 wall? Well, uh, a vehicle entered to the end of the checkpoint and uh, was waved into a predetermined uh, stopping point. Okay. This vehicle came off and was on Route 12 in Walpole? Yes. At the time, your escort takes just notice that Route 12 in the town of Walpole was a way to find an interest at I'm being asked to take notice that uh, Route 12 is a way or a highway in New Hampshire. Uh, take judicial notice of that fact. On well, that specific time, August 31st, 2013, uh, approximately 11, 19, did you come in contact with the vehicle with the vehicle made into your check station? Yes, I did. What happened next after that vehicle came into your uh, station? I approached uh, the vehicle on the driver's side, and as I approached the vehicle, I noticed that the driver was the only occupant in the vehicle, and the vehicle, uh, the window was uh, rolled down about four inches. And prior to your, uh, as part of the 
court order for the expiry check. Are you giving how you to address these individuals, the operators? Yeah, we're supposed to address them uh, courteously, uh, identify the uh, identify the checkpoint, and uh, state who's conducting the checkpoint. Okay. So what did you do once this uh, subject vehicle came into your location? You made contact with you. Explain what happened next. Once I uh, spoke to the driver, I identified the checkpoint. It was a court authorized uh, sobriety checkpoint and it was being conducted by the New Hampshire State Police and the Walpole Police Department and I requested license and registration. And how did the uh, operator respond to you? Well, the driver, the, the driver of the vehicle uh, asked if he was being detained or arrested and I replied to the driver he was being uh, detained momentarily and I asked for his license and registration again. And how did the operator respond to you on the second request? Well, the the driver then said, asked if he had committed a crime. And I replied, no, you have not. I need to see your license and registration. How did, how did this operator respond to your third request for license and registration? Uh, the driver replied to, to my uh, answer was, uh, I should be free to leave then. At that point, I then uh, told the driver to step out, and I opened the door for him. That operator driver of the motor vehicle uh, is in question right here before the court. Is that person in the courtroom here today? Yes, he is. You just identify him or her for the court. He's seated here, uh, brown hair, glasses, and uh, beard. Where to reflect the truth identify the defendant? Mr. Will? What happened next after you asked the defendant to step out of the vehicle? Well, uh, after I opened the door, he uh, stated what, and I told him to step out of the vehicle, and I directed him to the rear of his vehicle. And he complied. What happened next after that? Uh, once we reached the rear of his vehicle, I told the driver to place his hands behind his back and he was being arrested for disobeying an officer. How did he respond to that? He said, really? And I replied, yes. You were asked three times to produce your license and registration and you refused. I then told him again to place his hands behind his back and he complied. What happened next after you placed him under arrest? Uh, after he was uh, placed in the handcuffs, uh, I passed him down and uh, removed his wallet uh, phone and some cop block cards uh, he had in his pocket, and then he was placed inside the cruiser. So at some point, were you able to identify uh, a name for the defendant? Yes, after he was placed inside the cruiser, I went back to the wallet and uh, looked through it looking for identification, and I was located an Ohio uh, driver's license, identifying the driver as uh, Eric LaRoche. Let me approach you, well, sir, I'm going to show you a photocopy. If you could just identify what that is. This is a photocopy of the uh, driver's license uh, Mr. LaRoche had in his wallet. And that was on his person? Yes. At any point uh, prior to being placed under arrest, did Mr. LaRoche defend to give that to you? No, I did not. No, I asked you to mark the state's exhibit for one and you that. For what purpose? I'm sure that Mr. LaRoche had his license on him. Any objection to see that? <clears throat> okay, Mr. LaRoche, as I said, if you have any questions for the witness, you can ask them now. Sure. Um, you said this is a DUI checkpoint. So it's a variety of checkpoint. It's a variety of checkpoint. Yes. So why was the main concern license and registration? I couldn't hear you. Why was the main concern about the stop license and registration? That wasn't the main concern. It was just to ask of who the driver is. That's the only thing you asked. Correct? No, I identified the sobriety checkpoint to you, court authorized, and I requested your license and registration. Right, that was the first thing you asked. You didn't ask about being under the influence or anything like that. That's right. Then, yes, that's that's true. I asked for your license registrations first. Checkpoint you entered into. 
And what was your suspicion that you needed to identify him? He was a driver of a motor vehicle. Whenever a motor vehicle was pulled over on any type of stop, we request license and, driver, and registration of the, of the operator of the vehicle. But you need reasonable suspicion to start an investigation? we like to know who we're dealing with and right. whether or not you're licensed. But that's not. But reasonable suspicion is required to, to compel the handing over of license and registration. You entered into a sobriety checkpoint. That's why you were pulled over. Right, but that's not reasonable suspicion, is it? You don't have to have reasonable suspicion, you have articulable suspicion to make more vehicle stop. But you pulled into a sobriety checkpoint, there wasn't not a single cruiser making any more vehicle stop. Right, but is it somehow illegal to drive down under 12? No, I don't think so, right? No, I never said it was. <clears throat> for driving a vehicle on any roadway. In Ohio. Do you? <laughs> right? In Ohio, I didn't know that. I don't know if you know the laws in Ohio. Do you, well, I'm asking, do you know the law in Ohio? No, I don't. Why is it relevant when he knows about the laws of Ohio? I'm only here to determine whether you violated the laws of New Hampshire. Right, but why would somebody in Ohio know yeah. something? There's an objection about relevance here. Why is it relevant? Relevant whether it knows or doesn't know. Because I have an Ohio license, not a natural license. Okay. Sustained. Incident? 
the only incident. I'm sorry for the record, what is it? The, there's only one incident in the discovery packet. That's, that's your incident, your specific case. That's, what that, that's, the, that's the first page of the street. What about the whole check one? State versus Kabul. The validity of the checkpoint requires that it be effective. And be state be what again, please? That it be effective. State be, state be what? State be Kabul. Spell for me. Uh, C O P P E L L. It's a New Hampshire case. <coughs> What's the uh, citation? What volume is it in? Is it? Oh, I have it somewhere. 127. This is a case that in advance of trial, both the defendants in that case moved to suppress the evidence, arguing that the roadblocks violated their rights under the state and federal constitution. Will you file no such motion in this case prior to the hearing? Call a witness or, or testify yourself? Nope. Okay. All right, anything else? No, nope, just that uh, I don't believe this is a, a, a constitution, about, I believe this is an unconstitutional checkpoint due to the ineffectiveness and also the, in the petition. Um, what, what petition are you referring to here? The petition for the checkpoint. 
that um, the low amount of DUIs cited wouldn't justify a checkpoint at this level for such a short amount of time and such a small amount of um, small amount of uh, arrests that have been made. During Again, if, if, if you had filed a motion in, in advance of trial, that we could have uh, had a hearing on that, but uh, under the circumstances, I'm not going to uh, um, dismiss the case on your, based on that uh, position. Anything else? Anything else? Very well. All right. The state has the burden of proving beyond a reasonable doubt that you are operating a vehicle, that you're on a way, and that you refused on demand to produce your license under the circumstances. And the court finds that the state proved that case beyond a reasonable doubt, and it is a guilty finding. Um, what's the state's recommendation here? We recommend the uh, standard fine of $500 plus penalty assessment. Is that the standard? Maybe it's not standard here. It actually says it shall be a class A misdemeanor, but it was filed as a D. Alright, and uh, on sentencing, what did you want to say? Part of the, the 500, I'll suspend half of it for a year on good behavior, which means no felonies, misdemeanors, or major motor vehicle violations. You need to know this is considered a major motor vehicle violation in New Hampshire for habitual offender purposes, things like DWI and hit and run, stuff like that. If you get too many of those within a five year period, you could be certified as an habitual offender. And you realize you have a, there's evidence that this is a, a, a Ohio license. I do see you have a New Hampshire address, though. Is this what your local address is for mail, this West Surrey Road? So that balance of the fine will be three hundred ten dollars. You plan to pay that today? I prefer community service. Pardon? I prefer community service. Can, do, you, do you have a job? I do. Do you know where you do the community service? Uh, not offhand. You also have a right to appeal this to the state supreme court if you want to do that. You do. There's some things that you need to do to make sure that you keep things on track. And, and while that's pending, you don't have to uh, pay the fine. Uh, give you 31 hours of community service. Um, you have to uh, be back here on. How long do you think it'll take you to do that? Yes, yes, it is. Back on the March 27th. be at uh, more than one agency as long as it's a valid not-for-profit agency or charitable organization. You can get a notice outside of the window also if you need that. Um, and uh, somebody has to keep track of your time and say, as long as it adds up to 31 hours, you'll be all set. Any questions? I don't appreciate when you threatened me the other night at the checkpoint. You threatened me when I got out of the car. I don't appreciate that at all. It was very rude. Not very service-oriented. We'd like to invite you to visit freekeen.com. 
Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters. 